So I, yeah. And uh, this is Francis, and this is Dennis. We're just one of the many. We're just one of the many that help make this possible. So, yeah. So I'd like to thank the teachers, the debate club, and the library for letting us use this and making this all happen. Uh, the topic for today is uh, which presidential candidate has the best economic plan to help young Americans in the age group of 16 to 26? Obama! <laughs> The entire debate, the entire 25 minutes debate, silent. No matter what anyone says, silence. No so, pause, no booing. Got it? No booing, no cheering whatsoever. Uh, uh, no food in here, because this is a library. Uh, if you guys feel, if you guys get bored, please don't touch the books, especially if you are next, next to the shelves. Please don't touch a book, because it's a pain for the librarians to clean up afterwards. Uh, Victor over there, in the green shirt, in the middle, in the middle, right here, the run raising his hand. He will be your <laughs> What's the warning? This guy is your timer person. Can you give us a 30 seconds warning? 30 second warning. 10 second warning. And stop. Oh, that's what time oh. High tech. Right. So that is your, uh, your time limit and constraints. And did I leave anything? Am I good? Okay. Oh, we have judges uh, hidden here, so no, no, that's about it. <laughs> so, um, so we're gonna start. Uh, Mr. Clark and Mr. Jorgensen here is gonna start first, and then Miss Ellis and Mr. Barino here will start next. And they are for. You guys are for. Okay. Okay. I'll start. So shh. Listen. Are we, we good? Uh, can you uh, can you tell us? Well, we'd first off like to thank uh, Dennis and uh, the uh, and Ms. Ellis and Mr. Carino, the uh, Don't Hate and Debate Club, uh, for sponsoring this uh, commission on teacher debates, I suppose. Thank you for, for doing this and for everybody for showing up. It's, uh, it's amazing. This is great. Before we start, though, Mr. Jorkinson and I would like to just maybe let you know of a new school policy. The counselors will be calling you in and let you know about this policy shortly. It was passed by our administration last week. Uh, the policy goes something like this that we think that there's a number of kids at our school who try real hard. Yet unfortunately, through things beyond their control, or sometimes within their control, their grades just aren't very good. Some of the students at our school have a grade point average of 1.0. Some even have a grade point average of like 0.5. So what we have decided, or what the administration has decided, is that going forward, Students at a Royal High School will not be allowed to earn any grade point average over 3.0. So you students who are in here who have a grade point average of higher than 3.0, you will willingly donate some of that grade point average to students who have a lower grade point average than yourself. So there will be no 4.0 students at a Royal. The highest grade point average you can receive will be a 3.0. That will allow students with a low grade point average to apply to colleges and then get in because that will really increase their grade point average. If you, however, need to apply to a college that requires a 4.0 grade point average, you're going to have to find another way to get there. So you'll be notified about how we're going to implement that program soon. I'm sure you're excited about that. As we talk, and I don't know if we can make this any better, but as we talk about taxes or distribution of grade point averages, it's important to know who is actually being taxed. Because when you hear about tax cuts for the rich, uh, the reason you hear that, as Mr. Jorgensen will explain, is that the rich are the ones who are taxed. Mm -hmm. This chart shows you that the top 50% of wage earners in our country pay 96.7% of our taxes. They don't pay a small percentage the term you hear all the time is that they need to pay their fair share. Well, economically, for you wage earners, you may not start in the top 1% at 20, but you will certainly move up. And as you look at this, the 50% of people in our country who earn the fewest income pays only 3.3% of our taxes. Are you on time? Is that it? No. That was three minutes? 
So, <laughs> my, my welcome. So, when we talk about about taxing people, we have to understand that people in the bottom 50% of your income don't pay taxes. We're very low. Okay. Uh, whenever you're ready. Okay. And start. Start. Okay, uh, Alan Greenspan, former uh, Federal Reserve Chairman, is quoted in ABC this week as saying we, he, this is the worst economy he's ever seen. Uh, for teenagers, that means the worst uh, job market in, uh, since 1948, the lowest teen employment since 1948. Uh, and when the economy slows down, teens are affected first. This is according to the Wall Street Journal, September 08. Uh, in September 08, John McCain said, I believe the fundamentals of this economy are strong. Okay, um, what can you expect from a McCain administration? Well, all you have to do is look at the Bush administration because John McCain voted with George Bush 90% of the time. According to uh, Elizabeth Warren, Harvard professor, as appeared in the San Francisco Chronicle, under George Bush there has been no growth in manufacturing, no job growth, no export growth, no growth in infrastructure. In fact, real income for an average family has fallen $1,000 and uh, food and health care has increased by $4,000 since George Bush was president. Okay? We can't afford uh, four more years of 90% of George Bush. Uh, tuition, in the meanwhile, has risen 5 to 8% uh, a year since George Bush was president. Auto insurance has risen 5 to 7% a year since George Bush was president. George Bush had inherited a, a surplus of $230 billion dollars. He is leaving a deficit of $455 billion. That's like a credit card charge. All right. Uh, George Bush is not the only Republican. Reagan did it, and uh, Bush Sr. did it also. How about the Democrats? Okay. Uh, Bill Clinton, highest job growth in the 20th century under Bill Clinton. Largest deficit reduction in the 20th century under Bill Clinton. Under Democrats, investors earn 41% more money. All right. Uh, why should we expect Obama to uh, ha produce the same results? Because he has similar, uh, he has some of former Clinton's advisors working for him, including Robert Rubens, uh, Larry Summers, former Secretary of Treasury, and Robert Reich, Professor of uh, Labor. All right. Uh, John McCain wants to tax health benefits. Right now, health benefits are tax free. John McCain wants to give the wealthy even more tax breaks. Okay, and the biggest reason John McCain wants to continue the war in Iraq. The war in Iraq is an economic issue. It is currently costing us $566 billion. Alameda County is costing you $4.2 billion. With the money we are spending on the war, we could send everybody in here to UC Berkeley for free. In fact, we could send every 18-year-old to UC Berkeley for free. Okay. Um, 